Oh, hello, my internet friends. We have some tea, and we're about to talk about some photo reveals and after effects. So while I drink this, I'll let you watch the sound. Okay, so this is a technique that I use in my latest little documentary short thing of my friend April Solomon. I took some of her art and did a cool little inky photo reveal. Now, the ink presets and transitions can't comes from different stock sites that I have access to, but there is a way to do it in After Effects with some effects. It's not gonna look nearly as organic as something that would come from a professional studio, but it still looks really good. So, let's go right into the computer machine and talk about how to do a cool photo reveal in After Effects. Okay, in the After Effects machine, we're first gonna start by making a background. So hit Control Y on the keyboard, make a background. Doesn't matter what the color is. If you wanna change the color, just add a fill effect. Fill and drop that on and then just be like, maybe like an off-white blue sort of thing. Cool beans. Now, the next thing we need is a photo. So let's go into my elements folder and I'm just gonna grab one of my photos from my latest Grand Canyon trip with my girlfriend. Let's see, there has to be. Drag that on top. And what we'll do is hit Control Alt Shift G on our keyboard and that will match the size of our layer to the size of the composition. So, or the, the height of the composition rather. With that photo selected, we'll hit Control Shift C and pre-compose it. We'll call this photo reveal underscore source number one. And we'll just make sure it, we move all the attributes into the new composition and make sure that the composition duration is the span of, of the selected layer. Click OK. Next, we're gonna do is add a shape layer. So we'll add a shape and we will reveal some of its contents, click add, we'll add an ellipse, and then we'll add a fill. And the fill color doesn't matter. We'll go into those ellipse size properties on the path, make a keyframe on the size at frame zero, and we'll set it to zero, and then go forward, let's say three seconds. So maybe two seconds. And we'll set this to like, maybe, what was that? Like just taking up just enough of that photo. Right there is fine. So about 2000. Okay, we'll select those size keyframes. We'll hit F9 and then we'll just go there, replay that. Uh, that could be a little bit cooler. So we'll go into our graph editor by hitting this button right here. And then we'll select that last keyframe by making a box around it and then just drag that handle closer to the beginning and that'll give us a little bit ease ease motion oh that looks good that feels good so from here we'll go into our effects and presets and we'll look up turbulent displace drag that onto our shape layer leave the graph editor and then we'll set the size to say like 80 ish and then the amount by like 95 sure we'll go to the evolution and we will alt click on that stopwatch here and it will make an expression on that property. So from here, we can just type time times 100. And what that will do is change the value over time. So it's like at one second, it'll be a value of 100. At two seconds, it'll be a value of 200, so on and so forth. So it's gonna change over time. So if we play that back, it has this cool like wavy pattern sort of movement. Now let's just take that turbulent displace and duplicate it and decrease the size to like maybe say 30-ish and the amount up by maybe 150. And that will just add some finer details to that shape layer animation sort of thing. Next, what we're gonna do is we're going to click on that shape layer, Control Shift C, move all attributes, and we'll call this photo reveal underscore ink number one, because it kind of looks like an inky transition sort of thing. And then all you gotta do, super easy, you're gonna 
select your photo source layer and go to the track mat. If you don't see that, you're gonna select this little button down here and that will reveal that column on the track mat here, set it to an alpha mat and it disappeared. What happened? Well, we know that we just made a little shape layer sort of reveal from scale of zero to about 2000. And it's going to look at the layer above it and only show what is being shown by the top layer. So basically that little animation that we did with the circle and the inky lines, now it does the same thing. And what I love about this technique here is what we can do now is we can go into our composition settings by right clicking on the little composition name here. We can click on new comp viewer. And then if we double click on our ink source in this second comp viewer that we have, we can move this mat around or change some of the size and properties of it. So let's unlink that and make sure we're on that last keyframe just so we don't mess up any of the values of the original animation we made. Let's maybe bring down the Y just a little bit and then bring out the X to be a little bit wider and maybe scooch that over. And what you can see here is that it's affecting the photo in our original main comp. So if we just close this comp panel, drag this guy back over, get rid of that guy, and then go to our tutorial name. You can see here, there it is. And then what's also really cool about this technique as well is you can go into your photo source and you can easily replace that, that image. So what you can do is find an image in your project bin, whatever you like. Uh, my girlfriend actually took some lovely photo. Here, there's a photo of me. Let's select that layer in our timeline and then select the layer in our project bin, hold Alt and then drag it on top and it will replace it just like that. And hey, we do see we have some weird funky edges here. So all we gotta do is go into that ink reveal comp and let's uh, make sure that we adjust the size to fit that accordingly. Just put that right there. And you could do some fancy expression stuff to have this a little bit more automated in between the comps, but I love this method. It's super simple and easy to replace things if you need to or duplicate things. So. That's the little photo reveal. If you want to take this a step further, what you could do is pre-compose these two layers by hitting Control Shift C and call it Photo Reveal uh, PC, pre-comp, and then set that to a 3D layer, set the background to a 3D layer, hit P on the background, and because the background and the subject are on the same plane right now, we're gonna separate them just a little bit by pushing that background back, maybe like, 100 pixels and then hit Control Alt Shift L on the keyboard. Make sure it casts shadows. Set the darkness, so how dark that shadow will be to like maybe 20 and then diffusion by like say 250-ish. And then if we drop that in and then we move this light around on this light, we go to the position property and just move it around. Maybe go back into those light settings by double clicking bring down the diffusion of that shadow just a little bit, bring up the darkness. Maybe push it back just a hair. Oh, I forgot one thing. Make sure on our photo reveal comp, that is a 3D layer, we hit AA and we make sure we click cast shadows. There's the shadow that we want. And then we can go back into that light Bring down the darkness just a little bit and the diffusion to like 250 again. There we go. And then on that background, just scale it up just a hair. And then we can close this panel, drag this guy out, back into full res. A cool little photo reveal using some basic matte 
techniques in After Effects. That's it. I hope you learned something. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. My name is John Jagsney and I appreciate you taking the time to watch my tutorial. If you want to leave a comment and uh, or message me on Instagram, John Jagsney, I will be more than happy to send you a video message. Just say thank you. I appreciate it. Have a good one and I will talk to you soon. Bye. High five. Bye. Put the place up.